Okay, hi there. Welcome to uh, a session just looking at an essay plan, uh, an answer plan for an edX cell A level 15 marker. And the, the, the topic under consideration is the economics of debt relief. Uh, here's the question. Using the data and your own knowledge, evaluate the argument that rich nations should agree to cancel much of the external debt of low income developing countries to help promote their development. The context for this question uh, we'll go to in a second or two. Before we do that, quick reminder that for a 15 mark question at Excel, um, you get nine marks for knowledge, application and analysis, KAA. The answers there are marked according to three levels. Uh, you need to develop an analysis diagram if you can. That's what nearly always required. And write in analytical chains of reasoning. There are six marks for evaluation. And again, three levels of response, so levels one, two, and three. You don't need an introduction in uh, these kind of questions. No need for an introduction, although defining key terms is, is good practice. And again, there's no need for a final reason comment. That only comes into play with a, a 25 marker. So there were two extracts that I, uh, I gave to my students in our lesson. First one, and if you again, you may want to take a few minutes to read this extract. So press the pause button if you want to do that. The extract comes from a, a House of Commons report uh, arguing that global poverty is on the rise in 2020, in part because of COVID, the global pandemic. A company, a country is hit hard by a fall in the price of key raw materials that they export and uh, meaning there's less money available for healthcare. Uh, again, so press the pause button or maybe take a screenshot if you want to look at that extract. Extract B focused on Ethiopia, a uh, fast growing country uh, with a state led development model uh, growing quickly, um, but with a high level of foreign debt of just under $27 billion at the end of 2019. And the country, in fact, is now seeking help to repay their their debt. They owe $8.5 billion to bilateral creditors to other countries and over nearly $7 billion to commercial creditors, in other words, banks and things. So the question was the extent to which advanced rich nations should agree to, to offer some form of debt relief, maybe some debt cancellation. Uh, just the wider context is that these are the countries in the world with the highest external debt in 2019. Mongolia is way out ahead with a level of external debt, overseas debt, of over 250% of their GNI, and nearly th nearly three quarters, over two thirds of their GNI goes on just servicing the debt. But all of these countries in the table have an external debt of more than 100% of their GDP. So with a 15 marker, uh, I recommend that you write four paragraphs. Uh, keep in mind, you don't have to write a huge amount um, my answer this time could be a little bit longer than you need for 15 marks, but I'll, I'll want to talk you through, walk you through a uh, supposed answer. You can see what I'm doing here. I start actually my first KA paragraph with a definition. Debt relief involves the cancellation, the rescheduling or the refinancing of a nation's debt. So start with a nice clean definition and then get an application mark by saying that extract B says that Ethiopia has total debt of 27.8 billion. What I then did was I just kind of worked with that data a little bit. I said, for example, if the average yield on that debt is, let's say, 5%, the yield is the interest rate you're paying on the debt, then 5% of 27.8 is 1.4 billion. So if they're only borrowing at 5% interest, we're nearly $1.5 billion of interest every year just on the debt. Probably a big percentage of their income. So debt cancellation would release or free up fiscal resources for the for the government in Ethiopia. And of course, that would then give them potentially more money to reallocate elsewhere, for example, perhaps to increase state financed investment in new hospitals, maybe targeted measures to increase school enrollment and completion rates or critical infrastructure, such as new roads and things. Those that infrastructure would have supply side consequences, increasing productive capacity of the economy. Uh, so I argue that debt relief in this sense can have both a short term humanitarian um, impact, uh, giving the Ethiopian government more money to spend on basic public services like education and health, but also potentially could also improve their long term economic performance, which can lift their, uh, their, de their development score. So there's my first KA paragraph. Uh, and then you move to this to the first evaluation paragraph. 
So here's a phrase, however a counter-argument can be made. Extract B, again, a bit of application here, uh, says that Ethiopia's economy grew at close to 10% a year for much of the past two decades. So, the two decades. so this is a fast-growing country. And if Ethiopia's trend growth is that strong, then it should be easier for her to reduce her debt-to-GDP ratio over time as the size of their economy grows. So the argument, the evaluative point is that, in fact, maybe the case for debt relief isn't that strong. It's a fast-growing country whose GNI is rising. Uh, indeed, many fast-growing emerging countries, including Ethiopia and Kenya, have gone to the eurobond markets and issued debt in eurobonds, including Zambia and many other African countries. If debt relief is required, perhaps as a result of the COVID pandemic, which is referenced in Extract A, then the rescheduling might be made conditional. In other words, make, have strings attached, conditional on governments such as Ethiopia, implementing maybe some supply-side reforms, perhaps bringing the privatisation of telecoms or some other reforms, economic reforms, uh, to improve their supply-side potential. So I suppose my evaluative point here, really, in a nutshell, is that Ethiopia is a fast-growing country. It doesn't probably need the debt relief necessarily, but if you're going to offer debt relief, then make it perhaps conditional on some economic reforms. Always be on the lookout when you're revising for your assessments and things in 2021. Always be on the lookout for really interesting snippets of information. The, the context is the glue that holds great answers together. Uh, I found out, for example, a few days ago that the lower income countries in the world are spending just about $144 million a day on debt payments. Huge amounts of debt uh, and interest payments. And in, interestingly, in 2020, at the start of the COVID pandemic, 64 countries, 64 developing countries, were spending more on external debt payments than they were spending on healthcare. And clearly, that figure will have gone up as countries and governments struggle to cope with the impact of the pandemic. My third paragraph out of four goes to my second KAA point, a second possible justification for some form of debt relief is that it helps improve their balance of payments. So my second point is that debt relief uh, can improve the, uh, the balance of payments of countries, which it does. Debt cancellation, in fact, appears on the capital account of the balance of payments. It's not part of the current account, it's part of the capital account. So if you have your debts cancelled, it's treated as a plus on the capital account. Now, what's the consequence of that? Well, this means that countries such as Ethiopia and others, Mongolia, Jamaica, Lebanon and things, other countries, uh, they won't suffer such a big fall in their foreign exchange reserves if their balance of payments is given a boost by some form of debt relief. And that's particularly the case when these countries have suffered often big falls in, in the value of their exports from copper and cocoa and oil and and certainly in many countries uh, from tourism as global tourism has, has uh, dried up. Debt relief will therefore help because their balance of payments has improved to stabilise their currencies and if they have a slightly more stable currency in theory it makes it easier to attract inward investment and crucially to help control the price of those things that they have to import such as medicines and things. So in this sense, debt relief can have a direct impact on development outcomes. The ability, for example, to import an essential vaccines and PPE and other, other key medicines. However, critics of debt relief make the argument that, and so don't forget in each paragraph, just bridge the paragraph, lead the examiner to say, right, well, this is my evaluation paragraph coming up. So critics of debt cancellation make the argument that writing off debt risks creating a problem of what's called moral hazard. Moral hazard. This is a key concept in economics. It's the idea that individuals, firms and governments have incentives to alter their behaviour when the cost or the, of their risk or bad decision making is borne by somebody else. So if I, if I could take out multiple car insurances, I can't, I'd face moral hazard, I'd have an incentive to crash my car. Moral hazard means if somebody else pays the cost, then you may be encouraged to take riskier behaviour. Again, go back to my extract. Ethiopia says that, uh, the extract B says that uh, Ethiopia owes billions to external creditors, including China and European banks. Now, if debt repayments are cancelled, the losses must be borne by somebody, 
and presumably that would be the shareholders of the banks, for example, or the taxpayers of, of a creditor country. And perhaps if you cancel debt today, their, their willingness to lend to you as a country at low interest rates could be undermined. So debt relief today creates moral hazard. Uh, investor confidence takes a little bit of a hit and people think, well, why would we lend to you um, again? Because, you know, you, you know, every time we bail you out, you might take riskier behaviour. We may well demand a higher interest rate uh, in the future. I think with, uh, by the way, there's no need for a conclusion. If you've written four paragraphs, the answer is done. Don't worry about having to bring things to a conclusion. As long as you've written two KA paragraphs and two evaluation paragraphs, you're in great shape. Just a few thoughts very quickly about A star answers. I think the best answers really from students have that sense of contextual awareness. You don't need a lot, but you just need to know a little bit about what's happening in the world economy. So put things in context, debt relief in the context of the of the of the, of the crisis created by the pandemic. Debt relief in terms of short term benefits, long term consequences would be a great, uh, a great approach to take. Maybe linking debt relief to one or two other parts of the syllabus. I've mentioned balance of payments, talked about healthcare and education, which of course is part of the HDI measurements. One of my students said, can I use game theory in a question on debt relief? And thinking about it, the answer is yes. I mean, debt relief is really a cooperative strategy between creditor and debtor, between advanced and emerging nations. Uh, are there mutual benefits from debt relief or are the balance of benefits and costs too tilted to the debtor rather than the creditor? And of course, if, you, if this was a 25 marker, then you'd need to develop the answer. Uh, if you have a chance to, to put in a final comment, you might consider alternatives to debt relief. So are trade agreements more important to these countries than debt relief? Um, debt relief shouldn't be seen in isolation. What about measures to tackle tax avoidance and corruption? Uh, alternative, of course, remittance incomes coming in to help pay off debts and things. Uh, can governments, for example, borrow money off their own population, including the, the diaspora that lives overseas, rather than borrowing money from commercial banks and, and overseas governments and adding to their debt. So, I mean, there's a lot you can say. This is a really topical essay, topical issue, and I think it's a good one for those of you who've studied uh, uh, development economics. Well, there we go. That was my take on a 15 marker on debt relief, and I hope you found it useful.